So this is a watermelon salad. There's a, a, a Greek cheese that is very, very delicious that's called halloumi. When my mom made it when we were a kid, we used to call it squeaky cheese because when you bite into it, you're, it actually squeaks a little. And it's the only cheese that you could grill or you could saute and it doesn't really melt. So the first thing that we want to do is we're going to make a dressing for the, uh, for the watermelon. I have some watermelon that's just cubed up here. Again, we're using watermelon. Tomatoes would be great in this. Any kind of sweet fruit would be great in this. So in the dressing, we're going to put uh, some chilies. We're going to put some fresh mint. We're going to put oregano, garlic, um, a little bit of onion, some vinegar, extra virgin oil, very, very easy. And then we're going to serve that over the seared cheese. When you're working with chilies, the, the thing that you have to remember is, is think about how hot you like it. People always say, oh, if you take out the seeds, it's not hot. That's not true. It's the ribs of the chili that really create most of the heat. So if you want to amp the heat back, just you could split the chili open and you could take your knife and you could run it and take out the ribs and the seeds. And then you get a, a chili that gets a lot of the flavor and a lot, lot less of the heat. Next, we're going to put a little bit of garlic in here, a little bit of fresh mint. Now, whenever you're cutting fresh herbs, you just want to go one pass with the knife. Herbs are made up predominantly of oil. So if you sit there and <clears throat> on top of them like a crazy person, it's forcing all the oil out of the herbs. And the only thing you're doing is seasoning your cutting board. If, you're, if you think that you're going to eat that later, maybe that that's a good idea. But there's, all you want to do is one or two passes with the sharp knife, and that is it. So we take a little bit of oregano, just like that. So it's not taking all the oils out. And this way, when I put the herbs into my dressing, once I top them with the vinegar and everything, they're gonna release the oil and it's gonna make my dressing more flavorful. So scallions go in, we take our red wine vinegar, it goes in. Now when I'm making a vinaigrette, my basic, I like things, earlier I said I like things acidic. So I usually go one part acid, two parts fat. That's my general rule with the dressing. A Little bit of honey, and again, we have, uh, we have vinegar, we have heat, so I put in a little bit of sweet to balance it out. Just like I was talking about fat and acidity, heat and sweet work really good together. But you don't want it to be coyingly sweet, just kind of to help cut through. And now our extra virgin oil, and we just whisk some of that in. I eye it up, I know where I am with how much vinegar I put in. We give it a taste, it's perfect. It needs a pinch of salt. I get my pan going over about a medium high to high heat because we want to get that really good caramelization on there before we flip it. After seasoning, the second biggest mistake home cooks make when they're cooking food is they don't let the food caramelize. They say it looks burnt. It's not burnt. It's caramelized and there's tons of flavor in there. If you move food too quick or flip it too quick or do all those kind of things, you never get that effect of that extra layer of flavor. Pan gets hot. After the pan gets hot, we add fat to the pan. Then we let the fat get hot. When the fat gets hot, then we start cooking in it. So don't go home and take a pan and put it on a stove and then put the fat in and then turn it on. That's when things stick. If you get the pan hot, then you put the fat in. Then the fat gets hot, then you put the product in. It almost builds up these little pockets in there to help the food release better. You put the food or the pan, or the food on the pan or in the grill, and then I know it's not sexy and it's not romantic and, and for men out there it doesn't make you feel manly because you're not touching it, but you could just walk away and let the pan do the work for you. Food is, is very responsive in pans or on a grill. It will almost tell you when it's ready. If you go to move it or flip it and it sticks, it's trying to tell you, not yet. I'm not ready yet. So this is why I don't recommend nonstick pans because they take that knowledge away. When you go to move it and it releases, it's telling you, okay, I'm caramelized properly, now I'm ready to flip. We take our halloumi cheese, we take our watermelon, we put it in the vinaigrette. I don't want to put it in the vinaigrette too early because watermelon's made up of so much liquid, it'll just kind of break down. <coughs> so with tomatoes, and watermelon, I added it at the end. We take this, we toss it all together in the vinaigrette, and I just spoon it over the halloumi. So we have that salty cheese 
We had the sweet watermelon, a little bit of that bracing acidity, some chilies, and then I had this extra vinaigrette, but since we know that this all goes together because we made it together, just dump it right on top of the ribs. Dinner. <laughs>